Hi guys, I thought I might make a quick update video because I haven't really talked to you in any great depth about uh, what's been going on in my life and the different uh, directions that my life has been taking, the different decisions that I've been making and changes that have, that have been happening and that sort of thing. I haven't made that kind of video in a while. I did uh, make an audio file for the newsletter at the beginning of this month that went in some depth into particularly into the reinvigoration of my spiritual practice and the breakdown of that. And I talked a bit about the difficulty that I faced in the last 12 months. And um, so I'm going to try not to reiterate too much of what I said in that audio file for the sake of those of you who listen to that. Uh, but I do kind of want to talk kind of generally about the problem of losing your sense of purpose and this experience that I had of becoming quite lost and really losing sight of why it was that I came here to Edinburgh to embark on this research in, in the first place, what it was that I wanted to do with Anya Orga, um, with the website, with the channel, with my content and just generally what, um, what kind of direction I wanted to push my life in and what it was that I wanted to be creating and producing and what, just what the point of it all was. So I think first of all, uh, a sense of pointlessness can be just an experience in and of itself. It can arise due to depression and it can also maybe arise just due to other factors in your life that aren't ideal. So it doesn't have to necessarily in and of itself signal a problem with the things that are feeling pointless, if you see what I mean. So when I first realized that I wasn't happy with how the, the PhD was panning out, uh, when I realized that I was just frustrated and um, not feeling invigorated and just really not feeling it. Uh, I originally kind of assumed that my problem was that I had other factors in my lifestyle that just weren't, um, weren't feeding me properly, that weren't supporting my uh, academic endeavors, that weren't supporting my, um, my lifestyle as an academic, as a PhD student. And I think that was a fair assumption to make. And I think that generally speaking, that's kind of the first place that you should look, you know, look at your, your routine and your schedule. And that's what I did. Um, I felt that I was very adrift. And I talked about this in a previous kind of life update video about the PhD. Uh, I felt a little bit adrift, like I didn't have, like I couldn't kind of nail down the pro the right routine, the right schedule for me, that balanced enough um, socialising, seeing other people, engaging with others and having enough time, finding enough time to complete not only my PhD work, but other creative endeavours as well, including making videos and blog posts and doing creative writing and, and stuff like that. I was really struggling to feel like I was in control of my week, like I was in control of my time. And I, I really tried so many different ways to, to come about this problem. I, I tried to uh, come up with different solutions and focusing on getting PhD work for, done first and then doing other stuff and then focusing on maybe actually scheduling time for other stuff and letting the PhD work unfold around that. Um, and unfortunately for me, it, at the end of the day, I realized that it wasn't as simple as that. I ended up going to counseling and um, with the intention actually of really just nailing down my problem with um, time and my problem with uh, sleeplessness, with feeling a lack of routine. I, I really just thought that I would nail down a couple of little issues like that and that then everything would kind of come together. What happened for me was that through the course of going to counselling, I realised, I kind of uncovered really, um, the the extent to which a sense of meaninglessness had pervaded really everything that I was um, struggling and often failing to do. Uh, my entire PhD project had started to feel kind of pointless, like it felt like a side project. It felt like something that I was doing for the sake of doing a PhD and uh, that just was a bit of a distraction from what it was that I really wanted to do. But the biggest problem was that at the end of the day, I didn't know what it was that I really wanted to do and that was why I wasn't doing it. <laughs> so it kind of went round in circles like that for a while. And I think the biggest thing for me that I needed personally to get through that was space. So um, I know that I made uh, a couple of newsletter uh, audio files and possibly touched on this in a video or two a couple of months back. I started to talk about the possibility of quitting the PhD, that I might go back to Ireland, and I felt really drawn 
to doing that. Uh, but in the end, what I decided to do was to take a break from the PhD, to take a break just generally. Um, I am privileged enough that I have been able to do that, that I've been able to take three months off um, with a little bit of you know financial tightness <laughs> but um, I've been able to do that and that has been really ideal for me. Obviously if anyone else is kind of experiencing this kind of problem you're probably not going to be able to do what I did and just take a whole bunch of time off um, but I would advise maybe um, shifting your focus, shifting your energy towards something else, um, simplifying your life as much as you possibly can that down to the kind of bare bones and if possible um, removing yourself from whatever the work is that you're struggling to um, to feel the, the meaning or, or the uh, or the significance of. So um, I decided to take three months off and I felt a little bit kind of nervous about doing this because I wasn't sure that um, this would res really resolve anything. I knew that I would go back to Ireland a lot and spend some time in Kerry and I'm going to be going back to Kerry again in a few days time. And this time I'm hoping that I will actually make a video, so don't hold me to that, but you might see a video on that. Um, so yeah, I, I felt a little bit nervous about it though, because I wasn't sure that taking myself out of the situation, taking a break and then coming back into it would really help. And as I discussed in the, the newsletter audio, um, that did lead to kind of struggles when I came back to Edinburgh for a chunk of time in the middle of the summer. Um, it has led to me... Um, kind of almost picking back up where I left off in terms of my anxiety and insomnia and, and stuff like that. But I definitely have found that giving myself that space and giving myself permission to stop kind of pushing uh, to, towards the end goal of all these different projects, to actually step back from all of these things that I was sort of trying to do without knowing why I was doing them, it really helped me to gain clarity and, and to start to understand again um, to start and get a vision again of what it was that I came here to do, what it was that I, you know, started making uh, online content for and, and all that kind of thing. And, and now I'm really starting to feel like I'm, I mean, I'm starting to feel called to make videos and blog posts again, um, which is great. I'm starting to, f you know, feel the draw to make uh, videos about various topics. I'm feeling drawn back to the altar. The altar is renewed. My spiritual practice is beginning to be renewed. and. I'm a little bit trepidatious about coming back to the PhD in September, but I, at the same time, I'm raring to go. Um, I feel like I have now nailed down what it was that I actually wanted to do. One caveat is that before I was able to take this time off and, and realise like, oh yeah, this, this, is, this is why I came here to do this PhD, I did have to put a lot of work in as well. Um, I... Once I got to that point of realizing that I might quit the PhD, that I might just leave, that gave me a lot of freedom. It gave me the freedom to really decide, well, I'm not gonna do this PhD unless it's what I really wanna do, unless it's actually a big life project for me, unless it's, it's moving me towards um, some sort of ultimate goal of the kind of stuff that I wanna put out there into the world, you know, in my time on earth. And, you know, that can be a little bit daunting, but at the same time, it's so much more satisfying. It's so much more invigorating to know that I'm, you know, going to spend the next two or three years on a project that um, is at least striving towards producing something that I find meaning in, that I think is important to make, that I think can um, meaningfully contribute uh, to the world as it is today. So I kind of had to like actually do quite a lot of work. I had to actually scrap my entire PhD proposal and start again. Um, and you know, I, I talked about this a, a bit in the newsletter as well um, about that process. Um, but that, so that kind of combination of a lot of work in, just completely overhaul, renew, refresh, just start from ground zero. What is it that I actually want to say about this material? And then, you know, once I got that in, just take a complete break and, and just start thinking about um, you know, is this project, this new proposal that I have created uh, with the freedom of feeling like, well, if this doesn't work out, then I'll just quit. <laughs> um, the, you know, the feeling that I, I'm not going to do a PhD just for the sake of it. And I'm not going to do a PhD that is just a good academic project. It has to be my project. It has to be something that I want to do. So I was able to kind of go away then and really reflect on what it was that I had come up with 
uh, in that state of mind and think about um, how that ties in and whether it ties into what it is that I want to focus on. The kind of end realization that I had of what it is that I want to focus on producing at this time in my life, like what kind of research it is that I want to do, um, it's kind of twofold. The big one for me is always uh, exploring the nature of being, exploring the nature of reality. But that's a, that's a huge goal, that's a huge quest. That's something that's maybe more connected to my spiritual practice, you know, because I'm not trained as a cosmologist. Um, and in any other kind of uh, research role, I'm not sure that there's something that I consider to be big picture enough that will give me that sense that I am actually grappling with uh, the very essence of being. Um, so realizing that made me think that I needed to come back to my spiritual practice and my, my pantheistic beliefs um, very much from that kind of quite scientific mindset and from a very big picture mindset of, of really giving myself the time and the space to, to think about the nature of being, the nature of cosmos and how I fit in with that and how I can relate to that and to really focus my spiritual practice on relating to that. And also maybe thinking about how I can express that kind of thing and my ideas on that artistically, creatively. So that's kind of um, a little bit aside from the PhD project. But I also realised that I would need to bring that kind of thinking more into the kind of research that I'm doing. So um, essentially that kind of thinking is very philosophical. Uh, the nature of being, you know, it's, it's, it's philosophy rather than sociology, which is what I had been doing previously with the PhD. Um, and I just really, it really kind of hit home for me. And this had already, I had already shaped my, my proposal more into this already anyway, but it really hit home for me the extent to which I really need to uh, bring in uh, certain elements of philosophy. I really need to, uh, to bring in more theology as well. I really want to engage in much more depth and in much, with much more richness um, with the theology of the Dark Goddess, which is what I'm doing my PhD project on. Um, I really want to delve into um, the texts that I'm looking at and um, go a little bit beyond those texts as well maybe, extrapolate from those texts and um, like I say, throw in a little bit of theology and philosophy of my own in there, um, if I can, if there's room for that. And, and a PhD project is certainly not the place for me to be trying to unravel my own personal uh, understanding of the nature of cosmos and, um, and the nature of being. You know, that's a little bit too, uh, for, for me, from my perspective, that's too much for, for um, a PhD project. Uh, that's kind of a life work. That's a, that's a, a continual process that I will never achieve, that will always be a striving and that's okay. Um, but something that I can bring into the PhD project is um, paying more close attention to uh, the understandings of uh, these writings, of these individuals on the nature of being and the universe, on, on how that works, on their own cosmologies and epistemologies and so on. So that's something I'm really excited about getting into, really focusing more on, on the beliefs and cosmologies of these people and the philosophy that can be ex extrapolated from it, rather than looking more at the social dynamics and social context. So out of context, that might be a little bit hard to follow. I'm not sure how clear that'll be. Uh, without understanding the full context of the research that I'm doing. But I just wanted to give an idea of the extent to which I really was returning to the basic building blocks of what it is that I'm aiming to do. And the way that I was thinking about it really was in that very kind of abstract, higher level uh, thinking about it. I wasn't thinking about the nitty gritty of the individual texts that I'll be looking at and the the methods that I'll be using to interpret, to read, to analyze and, and things like that. Um, it was more about stepping away from that level of thought and thinking more about the big picture implications. So going forward from here, um, I feel like now that I've found uh, what it is that my primary purpose is, um, in specifically in the project that I'm engaging with right now, in my PhD project, I think that's going to really help me to come back to some of the writing projects that I was working on before um, to, uh, to share with you guys as Anya Orga. 
and uh, reinvigorate them and, and rethink what it is that I want to achieve with them, what it is that I want to put across. Um, I have one particular uh, writing project that I've been working on on and off for years and I've been coming back to that, rethinking that, rewriting, writing new material and that's going to be a long-term project. Um, but the nice thing about that kind of writing is that I can be a little bit more bold, um, I can be a little bit more... Um, uh, I don't have to go into as much kind of depth and rigour as I would in an academic uh, piece of writing. I, it can be more subjective, it can be more just um, personal opinion and personal perspective and um, I really like the lease of life and the, uh, the kind of freedom that gives me to be very creative in, in terms of ideas and linking things together and I think that um, I'm hoping that I will find the time to continue working on that on and off and I think that will kind of inter interplay. I think it will uh, connect with the work that I'm doing on the PhD, that they will inform one another, they will kind of play off one another nicely and that they will invigorate one another as I go forward. Um, but primarily I want my focus now to be the PhD project. I want my focus to be uh, on that topic, on that material, and I want to let kind of all the extra ideas and extra stuff that overflows from that to be the material that I share with you here and on the blog and all that kind of thing. Um, I really want to let this project take on a life of its own. And sure, like not all the ideas that I have, not all the material that I produce and um, will go into the PhD, but that's okay. There can be overflow and I'm not, I don't want to be afraid of that. And I don't want to feel like I have to kind of segregate the two anymore. And that's big, been a big kind of um, realization for me. Um, I actually had a spirit, spiritual counseling session with um, Kellyanne Maddox, which you are probably all or mostly all familiar with, um, way back at the beginning of the summer. And that was a, a big piece of advice that she gave me. And I, I had a surprising amount of resistance to that. I think I was still holding on to this idea that um, I needed to keep Anya Orga as this separate thing, that it needed to kind of be its own world, its own thing, separate from academia, separate from that world. And um, I've really realised that that's been a huge downfall for me, that if, if I'm really coming at both of these things, uh, you know, my content as Anya Orga and uh, my PhD, if I'm coming at both of those from the same kind of sense of, of purpose, uh, then surely they're going to interact with one another. Surely they're going to be just a kind of a lot, all kind of overflow from one uh, drive, from one kind of, uh, one path, one, one kind of life project that I'm embarking on. So I'm hoping that that will um, very much be more the case. I think this will be a little bit tricky, particularly in the beginning, because I'm not sure um, which ideas I want to share and explore here and in the blog and, and just generally publicly and which I want to kind of hold on to until the latter stages of the PhD. Um, I don't want to be, I don't want to be too precious with my ideas, um, but at the same time, if it's going to turn out to be kind of a central uh, spoke of my PhD project, I'm not sure that I want to put it out there half-baked. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to do a little bit of thinking about that and figure out if I if I do want to be at all precious about it or if I actually just want to be like, no, fuck it, like, just put it out there and um, I can come back to it, I can bring it back into the PhD project at a later stage and develop it and enrich it and um, yeah, I, that's just something that I, I do need to, to think about a little bit and about, um, to kind of just be sure about what it is that I'm confident and happy to talk about here and, and to put it out there. Um, so I think I'm going to leave it there for now because I've rambled quite a lot and didn't necessarily talk about exactly what I was going to talk about, but um, that's okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, the next time you see me will hopefully be from Kerry. I'm going to be there for a couple of weeks, so I'm hoping that I do actually get a video made because I just I want to keep the momentum going now that I've started making them again. Um, <clears throat> so. Yeah, I, uh, hopefully you can look forward to actually seeing some footage of the house and the surrounding area uh, for the first time, pretty much. And uh, yeah, take care guys and uh, I'll talk to you again soon.